Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, I have a math lesson for you about the angles of polygons. So let's get started. We're going to, today, find the sum of the interior angle measures of a polygon, and then we will understand that the sum of exterior angle measures of a polygon, of actually any polygon, is 360 degrees. And then we're going to use these two concepts to find the exact measures of interior and exterior angle measures of any polygon. So here's what I want you thinking about today. What characteristic do all polygons have in common? They actually should have probably made this plural because there's more than one characteristic that polygons have in common. But this is what I want you thinking about today. What do polygons have in common? So here's some vocabulary that's important before we start learning. We want to review here what a polygon is and what a polygon isn't. So a polygon is a two-dimensional closed shape with three or more sides. Being key here that there are no curves and no intersections on their sides. So I've shown you two examples right now of what are not polygons. So a heart is not a polygon because it has curves. And this figure right here is actually a composite figure made up of two triangles. And it's not a polygon because we have this point of intersection here. So those are not polygons. Now there's three specific types of polygons that I want to talk to you about today that are important for you to understand. So there's one called a convex polygon. This is a polygon where all angles have a vertex that points out and they all together individually each have a measure that's less than 180 degrees. So we can see that it's kind of like pointing out. So think of this as the center and all of these vertexes are pointing out and each individual angle is less than 180 degrees. We have a concave polygon. It is a polygon where there's at least one angle that has a vertex that points in. Right here is the pointing in and it has a measure greater than 180 degrees. So think of it as you can kind of see that it's caved in, so concave, caved in, but this vertex does not point out, it points in. If you think about a center of a polygon, this is kind of fallen in and pointing in. The other thing to note is this is what we call a reflex angle, and a reflex angle is an angle that is greater than 180 degrees. So this has one interior angle that's greater than 180 degrees. Often students think, oh, well, this is the angle measure. No, that's an exterior angle. The interior angle is this, it's a reflex angle. And they often don't recognize that this is an angle they think because it needs to point out like that. So don't be fooled, this is an interior angle. Last but not least, we have what we call a regular polygon. You probably heard about this in a previous grade level, but let's review. So that's a polygon where every angle and every side of the polygon have the same measure. So here we go. First formula that we're going to use today, and it is the sum of the interior measures of any polygon. And it can be found using this formula, where S is the sum of the exterior angles, and n is the number of sides that the polygon has. So I want to show you a pattern here. Let me grab my pen. I'm actually going to make a little organized list for you. And in a previous video in this playlist, we I proved to you that a three-sided polygon, which is a triangle, the interior angles had a sum of 180 degrees. And I'm pretty sure you all know about a four-sided polygon, which is a square, and that it has four congruent angles that all are 90 degrees for sum of the three in, the sum of the four interior angles would be 360. Four times 90 is 360. So if we consider this to be a pattern forming for polygons, that as we increase the side by one, we increase the interior angle measures, the sum of them, by 180 degrees. And we can look at this and say 540 is equal to 360 plus 180. And we could keep going and add another side. So if I add it to polygons, one polygon side to five, I get six. And I take 540 and I have add 180 to it, I get 720. And I could keep making this organized list, or I could look at this right here and understand 
that this formula represents this pattern. And in order to have a starting point, remember our smallest polygon we can have is a three-sided polygon, which is a triangle, and it has 180 degrees in it. So therefore, my starting point has to be that this difference needs to be one. So if I understand that to be true, that this has to be one times 180 for the first one, and my smallest polygon is three, I take the number of sides and I subtract two and multiply it by 180. Four subtract two is two times 180, gives me my 360. Five subtract two, three times 180, and 540. So if you understand this organized list and this pattern, then this is really not really something you have to memorize. You just understand the relationship between the sum of the interior angle measures and the number of sides that it has. You could always go back to this as a point of reference and make an organized list. But if your teacher is asking you to find the sum of the interior measures of a 20 sided polygon, it gets a little tricky. So let's erase this and continue on with our lesson. So now that we have this formula, and I'm going to bring it over, um, I ask my students to understand this. I don't give it to them, but maybe your teacher lets you have it. Some standardized um, state tests provided on a reference sheet. But again, I think it's more important rather than memorizing the formula that you understand the relationship between the sum of all the interior angle measures. So I'm going to model how to use this formula. So we have this polygon here, and I'm going to count the sides. One, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentagon. So I replace n with five because that's how many sides the polygon has. Five subtract two is three. Three times 180 is 540. So just like we did on the organized list on the previous slide, this pentagon, the interior measures, all five of them add up to be 540 degrees. Your turn. Please pause and find the sum of the interior angles of this polygon. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I'm going to count the sides. I'm going to start here at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have an octagon. I'm going to replace n with eight. It's an eight-sided polygon. Subtract two, I get six. Six times 180 is 1,080 degrees. So the sum of all eight interior angles of this octagon have a total or a sum of 1,080 degrees. So now we're going to use this to be able to identify or find the missing value of an angle in a polygon. So in a previous video, I showed you how to do this with a triangle. So the first thing we need to know is what is the sum of the interior angle measures of this polygon? So I'm going to bring up my formula here to find that sum. I'm going to count the number of sides. I always start where the x is, just to have a starting point of reference. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm going to replace n with 7. 7 subtract 2 is 5. Multiply by 180, so the sum of the interior angle measures of this polygon must be 900 degrees. So now I can write my, my equation to solve for x. So x plus all six of these angle measures must equal 900 degrees. So combine like terms, add these six angles together, and I get 740 degrees. Subtract 740 from both sides, and x this missing angle is 160 degrees. Your turn. Go ahead and find the value of x. Please pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So first thing we want to do is find out how many sides this polygon has. I'm going to start where my x is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have a six-sided polygon. 6 subtract 2 is 4. 4 times 180 is 720 degrees. So now I'm ready to write my equation to find x. So x plus these other five sides, these five degrees, these five angle measures, must have a sum of 720 degrees. Combine like terms, I'll add all five angles together, we get 615. 
subtract 615 from both sides, and x is equal to 105 degrees. Let's talk about the exterior angle measures of a polygon now. So this theorem about the exterior angle measures is only true for a convex polygon. And remember from our vocabulary that that is when all the vertexes point out. All the vertices must point out. Nothing can be concave or pointing in. So I drew a equilateral triangle here. So it's a regular polygon and each interior angle measure is 60 degrees. So we want to find these exterior angles right here. We want to talk about these three exterior angles formed by extending each side. So we know that this is a supplementary angle or straight angle and that the two angles together need to equal 180 degrees. So we know that each one of these is 120. So I'm going to erase the 60s now because I only want to talk about the exterior angle measures. And I want to prove something to you because this is often a hard, it's an abstract idea for students to think about that a triangle and a square and an octagon and a dodecagon and you could have a 30-sided polygon. And how could all of those sides always have exterior angles that add up to 360? But they do. It's a very special relationship of all polygons that they have in common. Remember, I wanted you thinking all throughout the lesson, what characteristics do they have in common? This is one that's difficult for students to embrace. So I've gone ahead and snipped each one of these exterior angles and I pasted them all together. I copied and pasted them all right here. And you can see all their vertices are lined up right here in the center and they form a perfect circle. And you can also add them up. 120 times three would be 360. So again, this is one of those really special relationships. I could draw an octagon here and extend every angle to form all eight exterior angles and all eight exterior angles of an octagon would match up here with their vertices and total 360. It would make a perfect circle. So if you have spare time on your hands, try drawing a couple polygons on paper and they don't have to be regular. They can be um, all different sides, all different angle measures. As long as they're convex, this will work. Cut out the angles and glue them together. They will all meet at their vertices to form a perfect circle. All right, so now we're gonna use this. So now that we know that the exterior angle measures have a sum of 360 degrees for any polygon, I can write an equation. I'm asked to find the value of Z, and Z, all these angles are exterior. So Z, right here, plus the second angle, Z plus 26, plus the third angle of 124, all have a sum of 360 degrees. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. Z plus Z is 2Z. 26 plus 124 is 150, and they equal 360. Subtract 150 from both sides, and 2Z is equal to 210. Divide both sides by 2, and Z is 105. So this exterior angle is 105, and if you were asked to find all, then remember that this Z is 105, so 105 plus 26 would be this second angle here. Your turn. Go ahead and pause, write your equation, and solve for the missing angle. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I always start with my X. X plus 50 plus 127 plus 91 must equal 360. Remember, there's no finding out what they are. They're exterior angles, so the sum of all of them are 360. This is a convex, nothing's caving in. So I'm gonna combine like terms, which is adding these three values together for a total of 268. Subtract 268 from both sides, and X is equal to 92. So my missing angle measure is 92 degrees. So there you have it, interior and exterior angles of polygons. I hope you found this lesson helpful, that you'll subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up, and I hope you have a great day.